Thank you for the opportunity to present our work. I have no disclosures. Detrusor underactivity is an important contributor to voiding dysfunction and has few reliable treatment options. There are numerous neurogenic and myogenic etiologies still being characterized. In the early 1900s, physiologist Barrington discovered three excitatory urethra to bladder reflexes. These are shown to work via hypogastric, pudendal, or pelvic nerve afferents. Pictured below is the lower urinary tract innervation of a cat. Note contributions from all three of these nerves in the proximal urethra. Our lab previously demonstrated reliable bladder contractions in neurologically intact rats using onlay proximal urethral stimulation. Picture below is a supine rat after laparotomy. The ventral urethra is exposed after symphysectomy, over which we placed bipolar 50 micron electrodes for stimulation. We performed our urethral stimulation after T9, T10 spinal cord transection to create conditions of spinal shock and saw no bladder responses. So we turned our attention to pelvic nerve injury as another possible underactive bladder model. We also developed a more translatable approach to our electrical stimulation by creating a flexible electrode support placed between the urethra and vagina. We investigated whether a novel flexible electrode support placed in an anatomically similar position to that of a urethral sling could improve bladder function in the setting of underactive bladder caused by unilateral pelvic nerve transection. 25 urethane anesthetized female Sprague Dolly rats were used, eight of which were controls. They were prepared with ureteral diversion catheters, transvesical infusion catheters, our flexible electrode support, and right pelvic nerve exposure to facilitate later transection. After three hours of continuous cystometry, three single fill cystometrograms were performed. Pelvic nerve transection was then performed, and this was followed by one hour of continuous cystometry and again th three single fill cystometrograms. Electrical stimulation was performed at 20, 30, 40, and 50 hertz, all at 50 volts, for a 60 second stimulation, 120 second recovery period. We tried to pick normal bladder capacities for testing, so we used our highest pre-pelvic nerve transection total bladder capacity and 75% of the lowest post-pelvic nerve transection total bladder capacity. We measured total bladder capacity and voiding efficiency before and after pelvic nerve transection and recorded the presence or absence of bladder contractions or voiding during electrical simulation. Data were analyzed with appropriate statistics. Pictured below is a voiding sequence from left to right of a rat fit with our electrical support after pelvic nerve transection. Please note the asymmetric voiding contraction where only the left side contracts. For model validation, this first graph shows total bladder capacity in the y-axis and voiding sequence in the x-axis. The first three voids are before pelvic nerve transection, the second three after. The dark bar graphs represent those rats undergoing pelvic nerve transection. The light ones are the sham controls. Here, total bladder capacity increased by 80% after pelvic nerve transection. This was not seen in the sham rats. The second graph shows voiding efficiency in the y-axis and again voiding sequence in the x-axis. Here you see that voiding efficiency decreased by 71% in our unilateral pelvic nerve transection rats. This was not seen in the sham control rats. The graph below is a systematogram showing response to electrical stimulation after pelvic nerve transection. Bladder capacity is stable. From left to right, you see a contraction in response to 30 hertz 50 volt stimulation and a void in response to 20 hertz 50 volts. Here, the residual was that at pre-pelvic nerve transection baseline. The graph below shows response to proximal urethral stimulation after pelvic nerve transection on the y-axis and stimulus frequency on the x-axis. The bars show red for contractions with a void, blue for contractions without a void, and black for no response. Contingency analysis revealed a significant stimulus frequency effect with lower frequencies more effective at evoking voiding contractions. The graph below shows average voiding efficiency before pelvic nerve transection, after pelvic nerve transection, and in response to electrical stimulation after pelvic nerve transection. When rats did void from our electrical stimulation after pelvic nerve injury, the deficit in voiding efficiency caused by pelvic nerve transection was reversed. We've developed and validated a clinically relevant model of underactive bladder demonstrating both significantly decreased sensory and motor effects. Our clinically translatable flexible electrode support reverses both of these deficits. We have submitted a patent and are in the process of creating more models to test this. 
Thank you.